but I can show you some things that are important. Can I ask two men just to come and put the pulpit, um, not the pastor, but uh, just two minutes. I, I, I literally, looks powerful. Okay, right, thank you guys. And uh, go with me quickly. We're gonna, we're gonna go through some stuff. Um, the guy on the sound at the back, um, that you, you guys have the, the whole, you know, the, the Bible verses and everything. Pastor Peter, you must watch this, this, this church because when this lady at the back starts operating, it doesn't matter if you're short sighted or long sighted or whatever, a miracle happens. It's, it's supernatural. So you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about right now. I mean, since I've been here, I've been my glasses on wax. Amen. I love the city of Cape Town. Praise God. I believe God has got a, a very passionate plan for it. Amen. Um, at the end of the service, we're going to be praying for my friend Kim Clement. Um, many of you know that he's been rushed to hospital in early hours. And uh, at the moment, there's, there's a situation in his brain where they see a bit of a blood thing. I believe that's a direct attack against the prophets that are coming against what we would call uh, the judgments that people have been speaking. Um, there's, there's two types of prophets, right? There are those prophets that are calling judgments, and then there are prophets that are south. Others are king who are actually pushing the, the judgments away. We, we believe that we have the power to push the judgment away. So I don't, I don't believe we call judgments. We call God to do, do a supernatural miracle in the nation yes. and in the nations of the world. All right, are you ready? Are you sure? All right, here we go. This is how it's going to go down. When I express certain things, um, some of you might theologically not like me, but then I would like you to spend time with me. We're going to spend three and a half years in seclusion studying certain things. The first thing we're going to lay down again is simply this. God is Alpha and Omega. <laughs> but understand this. Alpha means beginning. Omega, Alpha, Omega means the end. So when we view God as Alpha and Omega, He is not Alpha and Omega to Himself. Because God never had a beginning and God doesn't have an end. God is eternal. Please understand this is very important. So He is Alpha and Omega to the process of time that was developed from the beginning to the day when we come to heaven's eternity. Well, when we are in heaven's eternity, there is no need for Alpha and Omega because there's no beginning and no ending. It's eternal. So it's a name that is given for the process. Are you listening to me? For the process of our time. Our, our lives. So we know God is Alpha and Omega, but God doesn't know Himself as Alpha and Omega. He knows Himself as the eternal one. We also need to understand that the name of God, God's name, Elohim, is plural. Yeah. Otherwise, it doesn't speak of one person, get the tape. It speaks of three people. Jewish rabbis will back me up that the name Elohim speaks of three people, speaking of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in Genesis. That's why it says, let us make Elohim sing, let us make man in our image. Are you all with me? So now that we're getting the principles of the kingdom right, we have to understand the dynamics of the kingdom if we're really going to be a prophetic people. Because people, are, they misinterpret what I say because they're not studying properly. So let's get into the basics. Are you all with me? It is imperative that you also understand that when God said, let there be light, He was not speaking about the sun. Because the sun was created on the fourth day. So only on the fourth day was the sun and the moon created. So that which was spoken in the first day when he said, let there be light, he was not creating. He was speaking to himself. <laughs> the reason why I know he was speaking to himself is because the words for the word creation in Genesis 1 verse 1, that word creation then is the word para, B-A-R-A. It means to call that which is not as if it is. The same words that are used in the book of Hebrews, faith is, the evidence of things not there. Things not seen, made out of things, things made that were not seen. Get that? There's too much there now. 
So, what we have is, we have the word bara. When we look at the Hebrew word bara, and we take away the A, it is the word bar, which is the name of the word son. Hallelujah. Are you getting it? So what we have is, the first verse of Genesis is speaking about the son. It says, I am here, God, Elohim, I am three. I love this. One verse, eh? I am, you get the video. I am here, I am God, I am three persons, or three dimensions of one. Are you with me? And I want to now begin the process of time in a place that is fallen. Are you getting it? Otherwise, this place used to have an eternal realm of heaven. But now, because of redemption, it has to have a limited time. So I can clean the mess up. Are you, are you getting this? So he speaks to himself, and he says to one of the three people that he is, which one of you will go? Elohim says, which one of you will go and clean up the mess in the earth? And then we have the scripture that Jesus Christ is the Lamb that was slain from before the foundation of the earth. Otherwise, the moment the moment the Son in God said, I will go, He died. Because the mind of God doesn't have to do anything. The mind of God doesn't have to think a thought and it is. So as Christ's mind in God said, I will go, He became the Lamb and already died. That's crazy, yeah? Because it was already done. That's why He's Alpha and Omega only to us. Because He's already finished. When He was Alpha, He was already Omega. Which meant, you weren't getting it. When He became Alpha, the time started. Are you with me? Yes. He had already in his mind figured out Adam, Abraham. He had figured it all out. Jesus would come. Uh, the, the apostles would be here. He knew everything. He knew the Lamb would be in heaven. He knew the rider of the white horse. Everything was planned. It's all done. Yeah. That's what the mind of God. That's why it says, I'm the author and the finisher of your faith. And that he that began to be working, he was faithful to complete what? To complete it. Because he knows exactly what he's planned. Understanding of who you really are. Come on. So now, <clears throat> if 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 it is true, this is like get very fast with me. If it's true, are you with me? If it's true, if it's true, just quickly. If it's true that when he said let there be light, he was speaking about him his son. Then we must prove that the light is God, right? Okay. So then we, we go now from this point, we go to 1 John 1. Because John is the guy that is most personal with Jesus. That means that John writes things that none of the other apostles write because he was so in love with God that God must have whispered in secrets. So let's go to John 1 verse 1. Are you going to pick it up there quickly? That which was from the beginning. Stop. Have you noticed that Matthew Mark, look, I'm very fast tonight because I've got a lot of time, a little bit of time. Matthew, Mark, and Luke do not talk about the beginning. <coughs> Only John talks about the beginning. Don't you think that's strange, church? Are you guys, are you guys in school right now? You're about to find out who you really are. Amen. That's why the devil hates you. Yes. I don't mind the devil hating me yeah. because the devil knows that if I can tell you who you are and you find out who you are, Is this John 1 verse 1? No, John, the Apostle John. John, not 1 John. 1. Oh, there we go. But we'll get back to the other John again. But watch this. John 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning, so what's he talking about? He's about to explain to us what really took place in the beginning. Are you ready? It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. So the Word, so the Word was God. Hey! So this guy, John, 
Revelation 21, 22, 23, 24. Put it up. All right, watch this. Can we read it together? We're going to sleep tonight. I know that. Now I saw a new heaven. Hello? A new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth have passed away. And also there was no sea. Are you sure that's the right verse? Yes, it is. No, it's not. Chapter 21, verse 22. That's better. But I saw no temple in it. For the Lord God Almighty, Lord God Almighty, and the Lamb are its temple. Stop. <laughs> you understand this verse? Bear with me. I'm not shouting at you. Let me shout at you. Are you with me? Ask the Holy Ghost to help us. I saw no temple in it. This is the glory of God, right? For the Lord God, Lord God Almighty, and the Lamb is the Lamb. Who's the Lamb? Okay. Who's the Lamb? Where was He slain? The Lamb or its temple. Who's the temple? No, no, read your Bible. But I saw no temple in it. I saw no temple in it. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are His temple. Who is the temple? The Lord God Almighty is the temple. Literally, we will dwell in Him. Little temples will dwell in Him. The Lamb are His temple. Verse 23 gets a bit hot now. Read it now. The city, this is a glorious city that we talked about now, had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light. So when God started, He started the beginning with Himself. The Alpha literally is already victorious before we even get to the Omega. It was that. The devil was defeated before he even started. You've got to remember, he is God Almighty, all-knowing, omnipotent, omnipotent. He is most high. He is more majestic than anyone that could ever imagine any God on this planet can ever imagine any type of personality. He is the renowned, the renowned, the renowned, the renowned, the renowned, indescribable. And yet, the Bible is very clear here. The Lamb is His light. So, when God said, let there be light, the Lamb came. The devil has lied to us. He's lied to us. We're not, we're not going to be victorious. We have already won. Now that you understand this, you will now understand the next scripture which you quote. And we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. It doesn't say we shall be. It says we are. Even though I'm here, I'm already there. Why? Because the mind of God is already determined in heaven. That's why it's impossible for you to lose your salvation. The moment you have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, it is so set in the spirit realm that you, you are bound by heaven. You are now going to have to live a life of repentance, yes, and you will make many mistakes. 
and you might get to lose some of those rewards because you did some crazy stuff. But the gifts of God are without repentance. You will never take the gift away. So when you receive the gift of salvation, it's for life. It's not an excuse to make mistakes. Right. I'm not happy with that. Let's get more. 24. Let's talk about us. 24. You still love me? Say, Pastor Andre, Prophet Andre. Say, Prophet Andre. Prophet Andre. We don't understand you all the time. But I think you've got something. Thank you, guys. All right. Well, that makes it. And the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light. Who's walking in the light? Wait, wait. Who's walking in the light? Let's put a Michael Jackson thing here. Who's walking in the light? And the kings of the earth shall bring their glory and honor into it. So who's walking? I'm walking in the light. Who's the light? The Lamb. Yes. So where, who am I walking? I'm walking in Christ. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love this. Let's go to the end now. The deeper end of Revelation. Revelation 22. Verse 4. Now, before you put it up there, before you put it up there, let's go back in time. Alright, are you ready? So, can I use you? You can stand here. Now, it's very important for you to understand what I'm about to say. I'm going to show you a little line of thought so you can understand the position of God's mind. Are you with me? I know it's really deep, but it's important that I do this and then I can get a reaction. Alright, you ready? Watch this. Moses says, God, I want to see you. He says, God, I want to see you. God says, you can't see me. You can't see me. You can only see my back parts. So when I come past you, I will do this. So Moses is standing there, and God says, I will cover you. So God covers him yes. so he doesn't see. Yes. And then God says, You will only see my back parts. And when his eyes are open, he only sees God's back parts because God only wanted him to see Omega. Yes. You see, Omega is where God was going. Cool. God wanted Moses to understand prophetically that it was not necessary for him to know the Alpha at this point. Because God was more interested in him going across the plane of time to the Omega, which meant, I want you to see what I'm about to do in the future. Talking about the flesh. 
Which means at that point, we are no longer flesh. Amen. We are glorified bodies. We are like Him. I'm excited about getting there, aren't you? I can't wait. Pastor Peter, can you see it? You and me, Pastor Jersey. That's why we better be friends now, guys. Because we stuck with each other for eternity. I mean, I'd hate to be there in eternity and the pastor doesn't like to say, oh, I didn't like you on the earth. Oh, I'm sorry, but you get stuck with me now. And I'm going to be here forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. That's why I'm making as much space as I can. <laughs> verse 5. Same verse. 20, Revelation 22, verse 5. And it says, There shall be no light there. They need no lamp or light of the sun. For the Lord God gives them light. And they shall reign forever and ever. <laughs> you're so lovely. Okay, now I'm going to have a, Nobody wants to go home right now. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why, Pastor Peter. I love you, Pastor Peter. I declare that your region's Hanover Park eh, is about to have a full blown revival. I believe that. I believe that. It's going to be a revival that no one's ever seen before. There's going to be pockets of revival all over across this nation, but in certain places there's going to be unique anointing. Yes. Like thieves that are stealing stuff and they get convicted and they come to church and they say, Yo, Pastor, here's the stuff I stole, please call the cops to come get it. Or, or gangsters come into the church and say, Here's all our guns, please, Pastor, can you just sell the police to come and get it? Drug dealers coming with boxes and saying, Here, Pastor, here's the drugs, please listen. Salvation is coming. So let's get back to, now that we have been Omega, let's go back to Alpha. Can we go back to Alpha? Let's go back to Alpha. For God to get me through time. Are you getting this? For God to get me through time, you would have to design something. This is what I call the articulated wisdom of God's mind, or the mind of Christ. Isn't it amazing the Bible says you must have the mind of Christ? Look what the mind of Christ is. It's a supernatural ability to create things that are not there. <laughs> so, for me to have the mind of Christ, I would have to be, certain things would have to be happening, right? So God sets a divine order, which I call it the order of threes. It's very important to understand this. And in this order, He says this. He says, He starts the process and He says, to the earth. Okay, well, to the earth. I'm going to do it out of context, but just listen to the principle. He says to the earth, earth, bring forth plants. Bring forth animals. Bring forth roses. So you can buy white roses, you know what I'm saying? Bring forth all of these fruits, and the earth brings forth things. And most people read it and don't see any revelation in it. Then he says to the sea, sea, bring forth fish, bring forth birds, because the birds come out of the sea, by the way. Bring forth fish, bring forth birds, and it happens. And then he says to the firmament, firmament, bring forth stars and planets and that kind of stuff, and all those things start manifesting. Now please understand this, that God never speaks to the thing he's creating. God, in his mind, is so big that he never speaks to the thing he's creating. He speaks to the thing holding the thing. <laughs> if, you, if you know God, then you'll understand. God does not speak to the thing he's creating. He speaks to the thing that is holding the thing that he's about to bring forth. So he says to the earth, Earth! In you! Yeah. Yeah. Mm. He says, Earth! In you! is seeds. I command those things that are inside of you to come out of you. And suddenly the trees start growing. Then he goes, he goes to the water, right? And he says, Water! In you! There are fish! 
and birds. Careful! And then he goes to the gases, the permanent, and he says, Gases! In you! The stars and planets, and they come forth. So God doesn't speak to the planet and say, Planet, come. He says, Gases, you're holding the planet. Submit to me. And bring forth what I put inside you. He says to the sea, Sea, submit to me. And bring forth what I put inside of you. And he says to the soil, 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 Submit and bring forth what I put inside of you. So God has the ability to hide things. Are you sure you want to hear the rest? <laughs> so there are only three things in the creation story that have the legal right to hold the seeds of God. Do you realize that? Do you know how many angels are seen in life? Then God said, now watch this, don't get too excited. And then God said, let us, yes, sir. Yes, sir. God of Son of Son, let us yes. make man in our image. He had to go down and he had to take water and mud and mold the body and then he had to take gas and breathe into man and man stood up. Yes. So man was made out of water, dirt, and gas. The three things that had the legal right to hold seed. Seed. 
So we are the only creation of God that has the legal right to hold sea. So when God did come to us, He would put inside of us the DNA of our prophetic purpose. It would be inside of us, hidden. We wouldn't know what was inside of us. We would never know what dynamics would manifest on the inside of us until God begins to speak to that which was holding. That's why prophets are important in these last days. Not false prophets, true prophets. That's why preachers have to understand that their ministry is a prophetic ministry. And that when you preach in the gospel, there's things that are hidden inside of him. God doesn't speak to the thing. He speaks to the person holding the thing. And that's why when a prophet comes to you and says, there's going to be a great ministry. There's a reason why there's going to be a great ministry. is because the prophet can see what God has hidden inside of you. That's why the Bible says you have a treasure. You have a treasure. It's in urban vessels. Treasure! Tell the neighbor, there is treasure! So that we can understand the, the, the realm of Alpha and Omega. All right, can we get that? He's not limited. God is not limited in time. Because He's not limited in time, He can He can He can bring the past, He can bring the future to the present, so that the present can even have a past. <laughs> I'll give you an example to show you how 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 intensely deep God is. Go to Matthew 26, 26 quickly. Yes. <coughs> Somebody said yes, or well, I'll agree with you. <laughs> Are you having fun tonight? Please invite me back. I suffer from rejection because people call me a false prophet and I'm on cocaine and I'm traveling around with all me. You see, I can't help it. I want to be like Jesus. I've checked Jesus out. So I want to be like Jesus, Pastor. You know? And Jesus walks the town. And then behind him is 12 guys.
understand that has already happened. In the past, it already happened because it happened where? In the mind of God. Okay. So, are you ready? Do the past, eh? Stay there, don't go anywhere. And as they were eating, that's the future. Jesus, in the future, <coughs> took bread, broke it, blessed it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body. Right? This is the body. You all agree? Yes. Yeah, good. Next verse. And then he took the cup. Okay, this is not water spirits and stuff. This is just an example, okay? Alright? So I'm going to leave the church. Yeah, you see that coffee is with you with water spirits now. Guys, it's accurate, it's the actual water. Okay? And he, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them and said, Drink it all of you. Verse 28. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Now please understand that he is talking about the future. Okay, the Last Supper. He's already talking as if he died. He hasn't died yet. This is a betrayal. The Last Supper on the betrayal, literally. So Judas has to still betray him. He must still die. But he's talking like the one that has already died. So he's saying, this is my body and this is my blood. But his blood and his body are the it's still going to die. So in the mind of God, he's already died. So all he's doing is he's, he's, he's allowing time to manifest the matter of the spiritual realm. It's the matter of the spiritual realm that he's working out the process. So stay here, stay here in the past, in the future. And I'm going to go to the past. It is very hard to do. It's difficult to have chapter like this. We chat with people down the time. <laughs> Genesis 14, verse 18. Don't put it up yet. So here's a man. Here's a man. Don't put it up. I'll tell you where. Here's a man. His name is Abra. He's not Abraham. He's Abra. He's Abra because he's a Gentile. It only becomes Abraham after he believes in Jehovah God Almighty. So Abra is the name that was given to him by his gentle father who was a pagan. So the first one to be called into the nation of the Jews is actually a, a Gentile. Come on. It was a Gentile, Abra, who was worshipping idols with his daddy, who was converted into the Jewish idea of one God and gave up his idols to a process. Are you with me? And then God made him Abraham, the father of. So who's the first son? The Jews are the first son. The first son is a Gentile. That's why the firstborn has to receive a double portion. But I was it It says that even though you have two sons, the one who is first born, even if he's hated, must still receive the double portion. Yeah? So it was the Gentile that was called Abra. A Gentile. It was a Jewish. There was no Judaism. Until he realized who God was, then he became. The, the understanding of Judaism is to, be, to believe in the one God. He does not understand that. So the one God had to visit him, to change his mind, to get him into a position. So through a process of visions and stuff like that, there's a problem here. Do you know what the problem is? The problem is this man could not have a son. Just bear with me. He couldn't have a son. Because he couldn't have a son, there could be no legacy. I won't be long now. Trust me. There could be no legacy. Amen. You better ask your pastor to bring me back soon. Please ask your pastor to bring me back soon. No, no. Please. Okay. For him to have a future, for him to have a future, the future would have to meet him. Because at this point, there is no ability for him to be healed. There is no ability for him to have the son. So the whole legacy of God's plan through Alpha and Omega will be destroyed 
if he didn't have a boy. Yeah. That's why it's important for the lioness to continue of God. Right? So God says to him, stay here, I'm going to the future. Put the scripture up. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, the word Salem is peace, brought out bread and wine. Wait to Abraham, I'm going to the future. Matthew 26, 26 says, and this is the cup of the new covenant, and this is my body, which is given for the forgiveness of sins. Bread and wine, the two elements of the New Testament covenant. And Melchizedek takes the future and takes it to the past and says to Abraham, yeah, in the future.
to the Lord. He had no mother, he had no father. He had no lineage. There's only one that has that line, that has no line. That's God Almighty. So it was the light that came. Now that we are in this time, can I finish this quickly? So what is title? What is it? Is it a fancy way for preachers to jump up and down and get your money? The area of giving in the realm of God is really just work. Does God really need your money? I mean, he owns the cat in a thousand years. What's the real principle of tithing? Well, tithing is the covenant connector between the table of the Lord. It's what makes sense. Tithing is the covenant connector around the table of the Lord. It's what makes sons of God. God is not interested in your giving. He's interested in you becoming a son of God. Your tithe is the connector between becoming a son of God. So that's why when you read the book of Malachi promptly and not out of context. Can we go to Malachi quickly? And I'm finished. So I'm going home tomorrow and then tonight, tomorrow night I'm preaching again. Oh, yeah, that's something like that, I think. But anyway, go to the book of Malachi quickly. The last book of the Old Testament. The Omega of the Old Testament. I like that. Now, chapter 1, verse 6, can we just get the context of what Malachi is really talking about and get it right, okay? Alright? A son... How many times have you read this book, Pastor? Now, in context, what I just said now, in all of that realm, a son honors his father. If I be your father, where's my honor? If you be their father, where's your honor? Peter, if you are their father, where's your honor? Why is it that it is wrong to honor the days in the Lord? When the principle of God's mind is about honoring that. A son honors his father and a servant his master. If then I am the father, if I am the father, where is my honor? Huh? And if I am a master, where is my reverence? Hey! That's why this whole thing about treating men of God like I am a buddy. I'm not your buddy. I'm not your buddy. I'm appointed by God to get you to, from this level to the next level and, 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 and on that day of judgment to stand before God and have all these sheep with me. And that is a mandate that we take with much reverence. So when we harden you, it's not because we like you or because we don't we think I'm not pretty or because your hair is out. It's because we have a responsibility to stand before God. We treat men of God like hippies. Oh. Yeah. If I am a master, where is my reference? Says the Lord of hosts. To you priests who despise my name, yet you say, in which way have we despised your name? Watch this, watch this, watch this next verse. You offer defiled food on my altar, but say, in what way have we defiled you? But saying, the table of the Lord is contemptible. You cannot take the time and remove the supper of the Lord. The table of the Lord, the table of the Lord is connected to the realm of fathers and sons. That's why, men of God, a man in your church who doesn't tithe is not your son. Yeah. 
Yeah. You can have a church of 500 people and only 50 people tithing. That 50 is your size. The rest is just following, trying to figure out. They haven't had a revelation yet of the table of the Lord. And the Bible says the earth is groaning. The Bible says the earth is groaning for the revealing of the sons of God. Only a father can reveal a son. I'm going to say this again. Only a father can reveal a son. And only a son can honor a father. So when we finish this whole book of Malachi about tithing, okay, and we talk about the storehouse, God says, um, you're robbing me. Bring the whole time in the storehouse, you're robbing me. How do you rob God? Let me show you how you rob God. You're robbing me from blessing you. Come on. You don't rob God from anything because he owns everything. What he's actually saying is, I want to bless you so much because I'm your dad. I want to lavish you with so much good things, my son. Now, because you're not the dumb one, you're the other guy. Because the other guy is not tired. Okay? All right, thank you. You're good. All right. Now, because of that, you are robbing me from being a father to a son. Because as a father, I can only give inheritance to a son. I want to give you inheritance. I want you to have the best cause, man. I want you to never ever lack, but you are stopping me from being your dad. You are robbing me from blessing you. And if that's the truth, then the end must always tell the first thing. I'm almost done. Malachi 4 verse 6. Now we understand what Malachi is all about. It's a call for sons. Are you blessed, church? If you feel convicted, it's fine. God will help you. And He will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. This revival that is coming, Mandela is Sandra Mahel. The order of this revival is sons and dads, fathers and children. That's the order of it. It's really about people coming together, realizing that's my dad in the Lord. I'm connected as a son, and therefore I'm connected to the covenant. And when that is set, we will no longer have defiled. Some people eat damnation. The Bible says some of you are sick in your body because you eat, but you're a thief. That is just one small portion of the realm of Alpha and Omega. The things that happened in the beginning reflecting those things that are in the future. But now, at this point in our lives, less than two men a year, this Lord. You can go down, spine James White. <laughs> at this point in the history of the earth, there is going to come a lot of fresh revelation. There has come a lot of strange revelation. Mm -hmm. I've been in meetings with people that talk about downsizing, upgrading, stepping just downloading technology. But what is important is this. All revelation must lead to relationship. Yes. It must get you into a covenant position with God that you fall in love with Him all over again. <coughs> that you realize, I have inside of me a treasure. And you have a treasure. And when you received the Holy Ghost, God filled you up with the DNA of your destiny. And God is saying to you tonight, do not rob me. Do not rob me. I want to visit you. I want to speak those things that are inside you into life. I want to bring out those things I put inside of you as a son so that you can have that house and have that business and have that successful ministry of music. I want to do it for you, but I'm limited because you don't understand the position of who I am. So you stand your feet right now all over this place. I've taken your time. Don't worry, tomorrow we don't have to come to church. <laughs> Those that are in this house, I'm giving you until Sunday. Amen. Sunday, 
is the 13th. Alright? This Sunday is the 13th of September. I prophesied in this place that on the 13th of September a revival in came. Pastor Peter, do you accept? Do you accept? Man of God, do you accept? If you are a man of God in this building, I declare that on the 13th of September, when the enemy has said that this thing will happen, bad news will start, we declare a revival will come. I declare to you that in this message is the key to the revival. The revealing of the sons of God. I declare to you that the sons in your churches, in your houses, will begin to recognize who you are in the spirit of God. And your quiver, your quiver will be full of arrows. Revival is about to hit the young people in a fresh way across the Western Cape. And it is going to hit the fathers in a fresh way. Because the Bible says, if the hearts of the fathers are turned to the sons, and the sons of the children are turned to the fathers, he will not smite the land with a curse. From this moment forth, there is going to be such a connecting in the spirit between you and your sons in this house. You and your sons in this evil city. Your children that are around you will become connected to you. They're going to want to hang out with you. They're going to want to spend time with you. And you're going to find a whole bunch of sons tithing like never before. They're literally going to soak into it because they're going to understand the principle. There will be a sovereign and supernatural thing to push the move of God. Amen. I want you to say, I have, I have been designed, been designed to, have to have the legal right to hold, to hold seed. seed. The three dimensions, three dimensions that have the legal right have the legal to hold right seed. seed. Take your hand, put it in your, in your, in your, in your inside. I speak to you in a man say, I have no idea, have no idea at this point. At this point what God has put on the inside of me. But from this moment forth, I will seek the face of God. Because everything that is hidden inside of me, I give God's permission to speak into my life, to call forth my destiny. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Oh, my God. 